Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at my SHTF bag and currently what is inside it. So to get this video started, I just wanted to let you guys know that we do have a link down in the description to the Firearm Freedom merchandise store. Give that a look. And if you enjoy the content that's coming out here on Firearm Freedom, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. First and foremost, guys, one of the important things when it comes to an SHTF bag is the bag itself. And for the bag, I chose the LA Police Gear Atlas 72 hour pack. This is a very, very large pack and you can fit quite a bit inside of it. It has laser etched molly all over the outside and it also has a really good amount of support on the back. Now this bag is by no means the best bag on the market, but it has really worked for me and for the price point that this came in at, it was kind of tough to beat. Another thing that I should note about this video is this bag is nowhere near completed and I'm definitely going to be adding things to it as I go. I I'm definitely a beginner when it comes to the preparedness stuff that all of this comes along with. First and foremost, we're going to take a look at the large front pocket that this has, and you'll notice a lot of mesh pockets inside of here. I'm going to be going over each one of these items in depth, but this part of the video is just showing you where they are at in the bag. So you'll notice I had a bivy sleeping bag, a battery container. There's actually three battery containers total in this front pocket. No rhyme or reason really for this pocket. I just wanted everything in it to be easily had. You'll notice again, yet another battery compartment. And then up at the top, we have a life tent. Those life tents are pretty awesome. And it's basically like one of the emergency blankets, but wrapped around in a tent. I have my first layer of medical gear here. This is basically just a boo-boo kit, and that's why it's not in as much of a readily accessible area of the bag. This is much more of not a serious injury, although some things in that medical kit can be used for serious injury. Up at the top here, I have a 10 pack of hot hands. Those have quite a few uses. If you aren't already aware, we're gonna be talking about them slightly later in the video. Now in that lower area there, you'll notice that small zip pocket. I have nothing in there right now. It, it is a very small pocket, but would be nice for something like a knife or a flashlight, anything that's long, it could fit in that pocket. Moving up to the top, this is where I keep more of my trauma medical gear. So this is a vacuum sealed pack of trauma gear. This is dressings and tourniquets, shears, and a couple of other goodies in there. And I keep that in a very readily accessible area. It is obviously watertight with that seal. On, on the side of the bag, you have these really nice long pockets. This is more the navigation pocket. I have a flashlight, a 900 lumen C battery flashlight. An important point to note here is that I do cover my batteries with electrical tape, so that way they're not running themselves dry inside the flashlight as it's sitting here. Also with navigation, I have a map, a map of the state that I reside in. It is a map of the entire state, as you can see there. No part was left out, which is pretty cool. And then I also have a lensatic compass. A quick point, guys, I am going to try to link everything I possibly can for this video down in the description where you can find them. Most of this stuff I just bought on Amazon, so that's what you guys will see. You'll notice a really nice amount of padding on the opposite side of the bag, and then there's this kind of cool sheet that you could obviously put some body armor in or something like that if you wanted to, or a pistol or something else, anything that could really fit in there. Just be aware that obviously that is sitting right on your back. In this top pocket, I have a simple bandana, which comes in handy for a lot of survival things. I have some chapstick, again, comes in handy quite a bit. And then I also have my Streamlight Bandit, headlamp, which is an awesome little headlamp, very, very powerful, and USB rechargeable, which is awesome. Secondly, moving on here, we are going to be getting to the opposite side of the elongated pocket. Here I have the Nalgene water bottle. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. It's not filled with water at the moment. You can tell I kind of just completed this bag fully a couple of weeks ago, and I've yet to fill it with water, but I also uh, do plan on filling that up and keeping it ready to go in the bag. 
we are going to clip off these clips here on the side and it's going to show you kind of a, an accessory pocket that you can put a helmet as they market it on their website or a couple of other things. Now we're getting into the main compartment of the bag. Obviously you can see we got a lot of room which is really nice folds almost completely in half and then on the front part of it we have these mesh containers again this is where I keep some of the bush crafting material I have this awesome foldable saw this thing has come in handy a bunch just with regular household stuff in the yard and different things like that you can already tell I've used it quite a bit aside from that I also have my mora knife here in there as well and that that is just such an awesome knife you guys know if you haven't already handled them You've probably seen videos about them. They're great bushcrafting knives. And then I also have just a little bit of 550 paracord in here for a bunch of different uses. Moving down, I have one of the main pockets where I keep an MRE. This MRE I have open, nothing on the inside of it is open, but because I opened it, I wanted to keep it in that mesh pocket. Here's where I have a nice little waterproof container. I keep most of my fire starting materials in here along with a portable charger. So you'll notice some waterproof matches. Obviously they're waterproof, but I like keeping them in here. Portable charger comes in handy really, really, really more than you think it would. And now we have a ferro rod. I'm currently in the process of testing this, so it works okay. We have a lighter and then also some water purification tabs along with some other things in the box. I just basically have a whistle, some other charging cables and some other things like that. Secondary MRE here. This one is just in the main compartment, kind of shoved in the bottom there. Two MREs definitely is not the best, but it's also not the worst enough to get you at least through a couple of days. Stainless steel cup for either boiling water or making food a lot of different uses with this even transporting water the stainless steel cup is great i have some really heavy duty military grade wool socks wool socks are phenomenal having a couple pairs is great and then i just have some old 511 pants these are the tac light pros great little survival pants definitely something that i would like to have if i don't have the proper pants on then i have to grab the bag and go this one person travel hammock is really nice, allows you for some quick shelter, get you off the ground if you need to. A CRKT kook, and this kookery style blade is awesome. Very heavy duty, full tang kookery, and it is solid. It is in the side of the bag where it's not going to jab into my back or anything like that and get uncomfortable while I'm hiking around. Finally, we are getting to one of the last portions of this bag, which is my battle loadout ammo. Now I have this nine mil here, it's 250 rounds. You'll notice I have them sealed with duct tape in a freezer bag. I have the same thing with 223. Yes, it is steel case 223. That's kind of just what we have right now with the ammo shortages that are going on. It is what it is, but that is pretty much going to finish the inside of the bag. I wanted to show you guys more in depth all of my individual pieces, so we're gonna start off with medical. This recon tactical kit is actually extremely nice for the money. Like I said before, it's all vacuum sealed. The only downfall is I have not been able to find these again on Amazon. Now this survivor wear first aid kit is on Amazon, really nice kit for the money. One of my favorite things about this kit is for a regular boo-boo kit, it has quite a bit to offer. A lot of the regular kits that you see on Amazon just have like band-aids and that's it. This has quite a bit more in it and it's all clearly labeled, which is awesome. You don't have to get out a card and see exactly what's in it. Everything is good to go in a little elastic banded web pouch, really easy to get to and really, really nice overall for the price that they come in at. Moving on, we have water. So I have my main Nalgene water bottle. This is a really nice large water bottle. But then aside from that, I think you really do need to have some way to purify that water. So the choice that I went with for this bag, I do have multiple bags that we are gonna be getting into later on. But for this bag, I have these Coleman water purification tabs. Now these are kind of a two-stage process. One removes any sort of bacteria. The second removes any taste and color. And this definitely goes along with the water, which is my stainless steel cup. 
You can easily use this to transport water and also to boil water in. That's very important in a survival situation. If you run out of tabs, you can always boil the water and that's a very effective process. Moving from the water and medical, we are going to go into shelter. Now, shelter is definitely something that leaves some to be desired. These tents are more of an absolute emergency situation. The hammock can really be used multiple times. It's not going to have any issues there, whether it's just for a small amount of shelter. And all of these are really kind of designed to be built off of, in my opinion. The life tent is pretty much just a triangle of the emergency blanket material. You can really easily put on other material to make it a better shelter, but this is just stuff to help you survive in a really bad situation. This bivy is pretty much just a bag out of the emergency blanket material, and for the price point, they work great. For the food choice, you guys saw earlier, I stuck with tried and true MREs. The reason I like the MREs is it's going to have things in there that you might not have thought of in your regular bag, like toilet paper, other things that are definitely nice in a survival situation, and you can definitely spread out that MRE to last you a couple of days without starving to death, and they are really, really nice for the money, and they have a lot to offer in a compact package. For the edged items in my kit, I stuck with a lot of kind of bushcrafting material. The first thing and kind of the largest on that list is the CRKT Kook. I really enjoyed this for the price point that it came in at on Amazon. Very, very reasonable for what they are offering you. And I've had a lot of good luck with CRKT items, and I would imagine I'm going to have good luck with this as well. You can tell by the blade, I have not really used this at all, but it does have a very thick spine, and from my understanding, it is full tang with a really nice rubber grip. And I really enjoy how it feels in the hand. I'm going to be testing this out quite a bit moving forward just to make sure it is the right choice comes with a really nice sheath with multiple points of securement and then it also has an area on the back of the sheath that you can tie to a belt. This Mora knife is just tried and true bushcrafting. Very, very sharp edge and they are crazy, crazy, crazy durable blades for how simple they are. They're only a couple bucks and they will last you a lifetime. It comes in a bushcraft style sheath that's made of plastic really great for the money and I have absolutely no issues with this knife. I think it always completes a good survival bag. I had never really heard of this saw before. It is apparently of great quality, but I can tell you guys that after using it, I have just experienced nothing but good stuff about it. It really is true what they say. It's a great folding saw. I've had no problems. It stayed sharp and I've used it for quite a bit. We're gonna move into the electronics portion of the bag. I have this massive flashlight. It is 900 lumens, portable charger, and I also have all of this sitting in this waterproof container. One of the most important things I feel like to this kit is the way that I'm storing my batteries. I have a lot of common use batteries in these awesome little tins. The biggest thing that I like about these tins is that it stacks the batteries not one on top of the other. It stacks them in a way that is not going to drain the batteries, and that's very important. Although it is a little bit bulkier, I think it's a much safer way to store a lot of batteries. Aside from that, we have our warmth and fire starting portion of the bag. A lot of waterproof matches here. The ferro rod, that is okay. I am still in the process of testing it, but for the money, it's not too bad. And hot hands, a big value pack of 10. A lot of people don't realize that hot hands are pretty much going to stay good indefinitely, provided no oxygen gets into the actual hot hands themselves. A lot of great uses there. The ferro rod, again, is a nice little ferro rod, very compact, tiny, comes with a lanyard around, and it really is a nice rod overall, but I still got to give it a little bit more testing to give you guys a solid opinion. The navigation portion of the bag, I just have a state map. I think that's extremely important. A lot of people don't think of maps when electronics go down, you don't have your phone to pull up Google Maps, and having a paper map is definitely an important part of the bag. I have this small Lensatic compass. I'm still getting some practice on this Lensatic compass. My navigation skills are not great at all, but I can at least somewhat read a compass and it works out pretty well. Aside from this, we have clothing. It's really important to keep an extra pair of essentials in your bag. I definitely want to expand on this. I just haven't really figured out what 
top garments that I wanted to put in this, whether it be shirts or jackets and gloves and different things like that. I'm still kind of working my way to figure out exactly what I want to put in this bag. Finally, we are going to be looking at my ammunition choice here. Now, this may or may not be what you want to put in an SHDF bag. Obviously, this is a firearms-related channel, so you guys know I'm going to be bringing in some firearms with me in an SHDF situation. I have some 9mm and some 223. Now, obviously, this is Steelcase 223. Absolutely, brass is going to be a better choice generally. So if you have brass, throw it in there. But I have them in nice battle-loaded kits. Guys, that is pretty much going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it, so head down to that description. Check out links to the Firearm Freedom Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. As always, guys, stay tuned for more great videos to come soon.